Hi everyone, and today I'd like to talk about this bad boy. The Cult's Love Album, which is the second album they released. And arguably the one that um, really broke them, especially across the UK. There's a previous album, uh, Dreamtime, broke them in a small way with the hit single Spirit Walker. It was the Cult's Love Album that really exploded to be fair. Now, to take it us back a little bit, um, they're basically formed from the ashes of a band called Southern Death Cult, uh, Ian Asprey being their lead singer. Now when Southern Death Cult exploded, Ian took part in the name and formed a band with Billy Duffy from the cult, and they called themselves Death Cult, uh, produced a couple of really good singles. But then the... Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. They imploded a little bit more and started calling themselves the Cult, which I think was a good move. Because you know, having a band called Death Cult, you're not going to get much action with a name like that. So Billy and Ian uh, released an album called Dream Time. A great album. Very very different to Love. Dream Time took a almost like a an American native Indian culture reference and made music from it and they also took a little bit of post-punk as well so that's all in it's like the early 80s not goth the cults were never goths thank you I'll just draw a line in the sand under that there no so Dreamtime came out and um, that started to to make waves, shall we say. Uh, they sat back a little bit after Dreamtime was released um, and started exploring their roots and generally trying to get away from the from the Indian Americana sort of feel for a little while. And they released this. Now with this one, um, Nigel Preston, who was the drummer. Um, with with uh, Billy Duffy from from um, dear me, excuse me, from Theatre of Hate. Uh, Nigel unfortunately passed away, um, drug overdose, I believe. So they for this album they hired Mark Brzezicki from Big Country, and they produced a, a beautiful, solid album. Now, where love differs from dream time quite considerably is its embracing of psychedelia. And they bought out, let me see, was it, um, bum, 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 bum. Yeah, she, she Sells Sanctuary, that's the, the killer hit single from this one, even though they bought out Revolution as well and Rain. But uh, now, nah, again, I'm thinking, sorry, Rain was the one where they did a video and they employed as backing singers the two lovely girl singers from Doctor and the Medics. So, completely dressed in sort of 60s hippie culture. You had the long hair, you had the, the massive makeup, you had all the swirling around and all the arm movements and everything like that. But it definitely was no dream time. Definitely into psychedelia. Now, with that in mind, this album has hints of Led Zeppelin in certain phrases, certain things. They couldn't carry on making an album like this forever. So the next album, which I'll talk about another time, they really veered away. In the meantime, between this album and the next album, which was called Electric, they did start recording um, a song, uh, an album called Peace, but that didn't quite do it for me. After this album, they wanted to get back to raw rock and roll, um, very much like sort of like the status quo. And Ian, coming from sort of up north, sort of Manchester and Yorkshire way, he kind of lost that dialect and uh, bring on the Ian Asprey 
from the yeah, yeah phase, all the American inflections like that, so... He did gain some more fans, but arguably he lost a lot of the old crowd of fans. But, um, like, Electric was after this one. This is the album, as I've just mentioned, uh, where they, they kick the charts. They kick the charts on fire, they burnt up everything. And they made... They made a fantastic album. Well, this particular one, um, I've done my research a little bit on it, and I think at the time of last year, they produced around the world 53 different editions of this. Came out in 53 different con uh, 53 different pressings from many, many countries in a 30 odd year time period. So this one happens to be, and they all have subtle differences. This one is a Dutch pressing. Uh, what it hasn't got is the raised embossed phoenix wings and the script is just flat on the cover. The initial first pressings had the lovely raised sort of profile lettering. The great album, it's remained a, a firm favourite of mine for many many years now. And uh, I absolutely love it. Take Dream Time as a separate entity and compare it to Love. There's not much that stayed the same. Bearing in mind that Dream Time was very much of an Indian culture, Americana, as such. Love went into psychedelia. Uh, Electric went into raw rock and roll, Steppenwolf territory, if you like. Um, and after that, of course, came Sonic Temple, which, in my opinion, is, you know it's raw rock and roll, almost heavy metal, very much Led Zeppelin, which this hinted at, don't forget. It's probably the more, in my humble opinion, the more polished of the early quartet of LPs. Um, yeah, after that, things went different for them. But if anybody mentions, um, you know, what's your favorite cult album? I think probably around about 90% of people are gonna say love. It is really that good. With this being a Dutch pressing, it sounds incredibly good. It is quite quiet. Music notwithstanding, but as a pressing, it's quite quiet. Um, and that's, that's another thing about the pressing of this album. Some time between it actually getting made and starting to think about doing 25 year and 30 year reissues of the album, the master tapes were lost. There's some demos floating around, which Beggar's Banquet, their record label, did release. But the actual work tapes to, to create like a new edition of this album aren't there anymore. All they have, from what I understand, is just the, the two track stereo master tape, which they can remix, I believe they have done, and released it as part of the Omnibus edition several years ago but unfortunately until those tapes are found you're never going to see you're never going to hear a latest advancement in technology remix proper remastered this album but then again you know you've got to ask yourself does it warrant that because it sounds so good anyway uh, this will remain as one of my top five albums um, what else can I tell you about this beautiful album? Um, read the notes, because my memory these days is like Emmental cheese, even though I lived through this period, and the cult at one point were my favourite band. Um, engineered by Steve Brown. Beg your pardon, totally wrong. It's produced and partly engineered by Steve Brown. Actually engineered in most parts by Mark Spike Stent, who did a lot of work with Emission, and again by Steve Brown. So, um, yeah, beautiful album. If you haven't got a copy and you like the psychedelic slant of, of music uh, mixed with a little bit of, of rock and you haven't got this, go grab yourself a copy. They can be had relatively cheaply. Um, there's a lot of issues out there. I'm sure you'll find one to see your price pocket. But one day I'll be waiting and waiting and waiting for a superb, multi multi box set of sessions and outtakes he 
even though, like I said, Beggar's Banquet have released something similar to it, I don't think that's the be-all and end-all of the Love album. So, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, little bit walk through the cult's past. Um, I am Ken Worthing, and I love the cult, and I hope you do too. And I shall see you on the next video. Bye for now.